Please welcome Virginia. Thank you so much. It was, uh, it, it, like, uh, it sounded like it was impressive biography, but actually I'm quite, I'm still quite young. Uh, and it's true that I'm coming from north, northwest Russia, Arkhangelsk. Uh, and here today, I'm, I came the whole way from Shirkinas uh, and Perna <coughs> said also. Uh, and the reason uh, I called my presentation or my speech in a way, uh, Welcome to Shirkinas Notes and Pictures from Borderland is because uh, I became a local, um, I don't know, I moved to Shirkines two and a half years ago uh, and I was really fascinated by all these details uh, the person could spot in this real small city uh, which has population around 3,500 people and in the whole municipality of Sorvarange uh, around 10,100 inhabitants. Uh, and since, as Pern also said, that I'm a lingu linguist, I was also making some notes and spotting some st the stuff, and uh, I was also taking some pictures. And all these pictures in this presentation is going to be kind of my um, my um, um, interpretation of Shirkines and the life in this borderland. And first, I want to tell you this story because maybe it's both the story behind this picture and the story behind of kind of it's like introductory uh, story to my story and my story in Cherkinas. Um, when like first, I lived in different places in Norway and studied here and there. And once it happened, what really funny story to me. There was a guy. I have to stand me while I'm just uh, telling the story. There was a guy uh, who came to me uh, when I was studying in Buda in my exchange semester, and he was like, "Oh, hi. Oh, you're coming from Hong Kong? Oh, you're from Russia? Great, because we met at the gym or something." And he was like, "Oh, Russia. You know, once I worked with this woman, uh, Natalia. <coughs> Do you know Natalia?" <laughs> and I was like. Um, I don't know, is she from Arkhangelsk? I don't know, but she's Russian. Don't you know the Dalia? I was like, yeah, I need more information, I need more information. <laughs> and then it was like in 2013. And then the same thing happened to me a bit later when I was um, volunteering at the Olympics in Sochi. So here I am walking this Olympic park and suddenly I, have, I, I spot these people with a Norwegian flag and I was really obsessed with Norway. And I was like, oh my god, Norwegian people, Norwegian people. And then I just came to them and started talking to them. And then they found out that I was, I, I was Russian, a uh, Russian volunteer, and that I was in Norway, and I had my exchange in Norway. And then he was also like, oh, you know, I am working with this Russian lady. Uh, she's a secretary in my company, and she, uh, her, her name is Olga. Do you know Olga? <laughs> Again. And I was like, uh, is she like from Arkhangelsk? Or like, do, you know, do you know her surname or something? And she, he was like, no, I'm not sure, but I'm so sure that she is Russian. <laughs> and I was like, okay, good to know. And the same situation happened to me really many times, both in Alta, both in Ulan, on Lofoten, when I was uh, uh, kind of living there during the summer, when I had my summer job there. Uh, and every time people really kind of, really true, like truly believe that I, could know all of the Russians, <laughs> and then I was really I was eager to I was I was really eager to show them the map. Like, okay, here is Russia, <laughs> and I'm from here, like the northwest Arkhangelsk, and really I don't know that many Russians. And if it's Olga or Natalia, and it was not, like for one or another reason, it was always whether Olga or Natalia. I re I really don't know why. And if it's Olga or Natalia, I. At least I, I have to know at least a surname. Maybe I can relate to that. But it can be even if it's Olga or Natalia from Arkham gets still the chances that I'm gonna be kind of, you know, um, that I know those people, they're really low. Because Arkham gets, it's it's a really tiny city. I call it for a village when I live there, but in like in the Russian perspective. But it's uh, around 400,000 inhabitants living in Arkham gets. So there are many organs, many Natalias. <laughs> and finally, to the picture. Uh, finally, I moved to a city where nobody was surprised that I was Russian. Because I moved to a city, Shirkines, that lies on the Norwegian-Russian border. 
where all the signs in the city center are both in Norwegian and Russian. And this sign says library. Library in Norwegian and in Russian. And also, as you see here, there is a kind of a band with a, a donuts. And it says Olga's donuts. <laughs> and after I moved to Shirkinas, where it's like in the whole municipality, around 10,000 people, even in that tiny municipality, in a way, there are more than one Olga. And I'm gonna, back, I'm gonna come back to that a bit later. So this is kind of a pre-story. Uh, and first, uh, a little bit more about how actually I found out about Shirkinas and how I moved there. Um, I was a student uh, in Alta and I was, uh, I was studying tourism. And once we had this event course and my teacher told us about this Biden Spectacle Festival and she mentioned that, that there was, it was the most cross-border or border crossing festival in the whole Norway. And I was like, okay, that sounds interesting, but I never heard about this festival. And she was telling like, yes, this is, it lies in Tirkinas, and she was telling us the story of both the town and the border and the festival and this art and culture life in Tirkinas. And I got really interested, and uh, after that, when she was like, yes, um, what do you think, guys, about going there as a group of volunteers in order to volunteer at this festival? And I got really excited because this is exactly what I wrote my master thesis on, festival volunteers. And I was like, yes, I love volunteering. I've been volunteering my whole life. So yes, let's go to Shirkinas. And when I came to Shirkinas, I, at first I saw a really tiny place. It was winter, it was February, because Biden Spectacle Festival takes place in February. And first I, I wasn't really impressed. I was like, okay. What do people do here? It's like really, really tiny place. But yes, the festival, the festival um, in dimensions, like to in the proportions of the city um, size and the size of the town and the size of this festival, it was kind of um, impressive. Uh, and this is this is how I got in contact with uh, Peking Bruen, uh, this organization where I work today, or in English, it's the Girls on the Bridge. Um, and then I found out that there were so many things I, I was about to learn about Shirkinas. <coughs> because the only thing I knew that, yes, of course, it's high north, it's uh, about the Arctic Circle, but it, it's Barents region, but it's all, all of this, it was really, really general concepts. And I didn't give more information than that. Uh, and then I was about to learn more. And this is kind of notes and all of these pictures uh, which I gathered together in this presentation. Uh, I try to make kind of a review of every on everything which I think is the most crucial things to know about Cherkines and the Sørvarangi municipality. Uh, Cherkines has really many names. Uh, people call it for capital of the Barnes region because this is where the Barnes Cooperation. Uh, was initiated. Of course, people call it for Russian capital of Norway because of this really high presence of uh, Russian people and Russian culture in the city because, of course, it's in the it's, it lies on the border with Russia. Then uh, it's, yes, maybe some of the most like tricky and curious, interesting things is a geopolitical center of Norway, even though when I first arrived to Shirkinas and saw this tiny city center, I was like, yes, what do people do here and stuff? So little did I know about Chirkinas as a geopolitical center of Norway. And finally, uh, I think it's my favorite concept of the borderland. Because we call uh, Chirkinas and our community, municipality, sorry, for borderland. Because uh, Chirkinas lies not only on the border to Russia, but only also on the border to Finland. So it's a real borderland. And here a picture is a, a picture of our um, city hall. And which is funny, here. There are two figures, like wooden figures, and the one is a lion. Of course it's a symbol of Norway. And here is a bear, uh, which symbolizes Russia. And if you ask me, they stay there and dancing together. And this is how uh, we people in Shirkinas um, see this 
cooperation and friendship, and our neighborhood <coughs> with Russia. Uh, and since I'm, I have this linguistic background, um, uh, I made a list of kind of vocabulary because uh, Shirkinas is all about the borders, but not only about the borders. Uh, the most fascinating thing about this is that Shirkinas it's all about both borders and about crossing the borders or breaking the borders because people are always talking about breaking the borders, crossing the borders, both geographic, political, and imaginary, whatever it is. So borderland, borders, borderless, transborder, border crossing, border crossing cooperation, borderland without borders. All of these names, all these words and sentences, they, you, you can really meet them in your everyday life in Shirkinas every single day. Uh, and this, I love this really, really a lot because um, I used to go around the city and spot some really curious things about Shirkinas as a borderland chicken as, as to political center as a, or uh, Russian capital of Norway and I take I used to take picture or something and this time uh, the thing uh, which really fascinated me is this announcement on this announcement announcement board uh, it's located on the local cafe and there there was announcement about like job announcement or something and there it said that uh, the, a person who can set the borders is wanted in this borderless municipality. Uh, Barents capital. Uh, Shirkinas uh, is, as you know, a capital of the Barents Cooperation and Barents, Barents region. Uh, it's, uh, it's all, um, it all started from uh, Turva Stutenberg. Uh, who initiated this Barnes Cooperation in 1992, and shortly after that, uh, the Shitkinas Declaration was signed in 1993. Uh, and this declaration was thought as a peace project after this long Cold War and after the Soviet collapsed. And this uh, declaration and this Barnes Cooperation as well, it was to provide this politically, uh, like peaceful political frame for uh, people to people cooperation, people to people cooperation across the borders. Uh, and after that, uh, there was a Norwegian Warren Secretariat established, and Norwegian Warren Secretariat is working with supporting Norwegian Russian cooperation project. And the main quarter of Baden Secretariat uh, is located in Shirkines, but apart from that, they also have their Russian uh, departments in three of Russian North. Western Russian cities. It's in Arkhangelsk, my home city, then in this, it's in Murmansk, it's closer to the border, and also in Narianmar, it's a Nenets region. Um, and Baden's secretariat's uh, main goal is to remove all of these cultural um, barriers and, you know, um, and to start um, building the bridges from one side of the border to another one. And since we're talking about Barents, uh, one um, and Barents Sea, because uh, everybody became united by the Barents Sea, uh, one of the uh, one of these uh, results of this Barents cooperation was that um, the shipyard named Kimek was established in Shirkines, uh and the main actor or the main um, kind of um, um, goal uh, was Russian fleet going in the Barents Sea. Because when they go in the Barents Sea, they come into Shirkinas because of this shipyard, Kimek, which is located in Shirkinas, in order to get all of these uh, necessary services. Uh, and that is why sometimes it takes a real long time to repair the ship or the boat. And that is why we have lots of uh, Russian sailors or fishermen that walking around the city and killing their time and don't, not knowing what to do. And sometimes, really often, they come in to me at the, somewhere at the streets. Maybe they figure out somehow that I'm also Russian. Uh, and then they ask, you know, okay, where, like, do you have some nightclubs? And it's, for instance, like on Monday evening or something. Yes, we have a club, air <coughs> club, the club. It's there. Yes, is it open tonight? No, it's not open tonight, only on Saturday. Really? Only on Saturday? How do you survive here? And 
so on and so forth. So, um, so we have a really strong presence of these sa Russian sailors and Russian uh, fishermen. And do you remember I told you about the Olga? It was not the only Olga in the city because here is a boat named Olga 1. So at least it's two. Now we know that. Uh, the next kind of category or the name of Shirkinis is that it's a Russian capital uh, of Norway. Uh, after the Soviet collapsed, um, it, w it became m much more easier for Russians to cross the border and to come to Shirkinis and then to Europe and via Shirkinis. And there is why um, during the 90s it was a boom uh, which uh, people call for Russian wives. Uh, and it's literally that tells us that it comes like from Russia with love. Uh, there was a boom that about of these women who crossed the border and found their love. Uh, they met some couples and they got married to Norwegian guys and then they moved to Chirkines and some of them moved further. But I think that majority of them they really established in Chirkines. And during the 90s, when it was like when it was still fresh and I know <coughs> people were really skeptical. And when I was talking to some of the locals from Shirkinas, and when they described the situation and that picture back then in the 90s, they were talking about this like, you know, like skeptically, yeah, Russian wives, Russian wives. But then bit by bit, uh, these Russian women and Russian wives, they kind of integrated in the local community. And after that, there was no longer need of uh, talking about this phenomenon as something uh, suspicious or s that calls like uh, skeptic for skepticism. So it was not like that. And I had one story. Um, there was one journalist um, from Oslo. He called me because he knew uh, he knew about our organization and he really wanted to uh, come to Shirkinas and in order to make this uh, case about. Russians living in Shirkinas or in Norway in general and they he was following me and we were talking and then he asked me a question It was a really strange question. He's like, okay, tell me I need some Russian people in order to make this case. I want to make some interviews Where do Russians gather? And first I was like Sorry gather. How do you mean? No, you know, they have to have some kind of special Russian places in order to Gather together all these Russian uh, inhabitants of Kishirkness. And I was like, you know, th they are pretty much integrated, so I can't tell you about these super Russian places where people gather. Well, yes, we have, for instance, we have this uh, border club which is called Dialogue. It's a club of Russian culture where the Russian children can learn uh, a bit of more Russian language if, if they are born in Norway, for instance, not, in order not to lose their mother tongue. But places that where Russians gather only with together, it's it's a bit strange because I imagine myself some witches that you know gather in order to uh, perform some witchcraft. Like oh, we're only Russians, we're <coughs> only gonna gather with another Russians, and and that guy from Oslo, so he didn't know that it was all the Russians who moved here to Shirkinas uh, during the 90s. They were really good integrated and. People, like both Norwegians, Russians and other nationalities, they were really good intertwined. So that was a funny story about this. But then I, in the end of our conversation I said, okay, if you really want to do some Russian like sightseeing or something, you can go to the Russian market. Uh, it's a really special thing. It's not local ladies or local Russians who do that, but still. Uh, Every month, it's like once a month, I guess, uh, there are some Russian ladies uh, who are coming from uh, border uh, cities or border towns uh, from the Russian side. And they're coming to Shitkinas in order to sell some souvenirs, some clothes, some hats and real, some real iconic Russian souvenirs. And this is where you can buy uh, Russian dolls, Matryoshka, uh, with a Putin face on it or Trumps or whatever you want. Actually, uh, so that was the most Russian place I, I kind of could imagine myself and then I just tipsed him about that. That was it. And speaking about um, integration, uh, here is a picture from the 17th of May, the Constitution Day uh, of Norway. And uh, 
it's really a traditional thing to make this uh, champagne breakfast. And in Shirkinas, this champagne breakfast on 17th of May looks like this. It's like Norwegian flags, Norwegian flags, Norwegian flags, champagne, some of that. It's a kind of kettle, Russian traditional kettle. So everything is really intertwined and uh, this picture is taken under this private celebration so people really do gather together and it doesn't mean if you it doesn't matter if you're Russian or you're Norwegian everybody is celebrating all of these national days together. And uh, borderland, my favorite concept. Um, here is a picture uh, of one uh, painting of one uh, young gentleman named Sindra. Uh, we, picking up a Bruin, sometimes we have this workshop for the kids. Uh, and once uh, the theme was the border. Uh, tell me, what do you see on this picture? On this painting? Can you tell me what these red and green or yellow things are? Border posts. Yes, border posts. And the blue thing? The stripe? River. River. Do you know what the river is? Pacific. Pacific, yes. Good. So really, this was uh, during this workshop, uh, the children, they got a task uh, to uh, paint their hometown. And then there were many, many children. It was really surprisingly and really sweet uh, when they began uh, painting all these, you know, uh, national symbols of Russia and Norway all together in one painting with the border. That was really fantastic. And uh, when I was t talking about this Russian and Norwegian um, border relationship and neighborhood, um, it's, not, it's not only that, because Chirkines is located both on the border to Russia and Finland, as I said before, and it's only in 15 kilometers uh, that Russia is, and in 50, it's the Finland. And here in uh, our municipality, uh, we have its really like international background because uh, we have both um, a Finnish migration uh, who came to uh, Sorvaranga municipality uh, during the from the middle of 18th century, and they established themselves in the Pacific Valley. Uh, and still, this day to day, there are really many many fam families in uh, Pacific Valley that have their surnames, uh, like Finnish surnames, and the families are originally Finnish. And I also have many friends who have some relatives and grandmothers, grandfathers who are Finnish or were Finnish. And also, of course, we have uh, the ind indigenous peoples, Sami peoples uh, settlements uh, in uh, one part of Sovereign municipality called Naden. And uh, as you... As you, I think you know about this, that the border, the Norwegian-Russian border, it runs in the river, and the river is named uh, Pacific River. Uh, <laughs> and this picture is taken from the, uh, the area called Grand <coughs> Uh And you can see, because sometimes uh, the river goes really narrow, so that you can see both Russian post on another side and Norwegian post on this side. Uh, and it's really prohibited to swim across the border or across the border by swimming. And people like um, uh, Garrison of Sovaranga, uh, military recruits, they're really watching, watching you, so they know what's going on in there, both Russian side and Norwegian side. So, and if, of course, you can do that, you can swim, you can cross, but then you have to pay a really huge fine. I don't know how much it is, but it's not uh, recommended. And the, the whole border in total, its length is about 198 kilometers. It's always remeasured every year, maybe. Uh, so, but for now, today, it's 198. And as I told you before, uh, Shirkines, or Sörvanger uh, municipality, is really, really international uh, municipality. Not only because of Finnish people, Russian people, Norwegian people and Sami people, but also because of the, all the other nationalities and other people who are moving to Shetkines by of one or another reason. And now I want to show you a, just a tiny video because um, we have a local journalist and was, once she was really eager to find out 
why is this uh, why is Shirkinas is so international and she went out um, in the city center in order to find <coughs> some local Shirkinas people in order to talk to them about that and she didn't quite um, <coughs> manage to find a local uh, person who would come from Shirkinas at the same time like at once so um, it's going to be in a region It's going to be in a region, but you have this main idea how she's trying. She's trying to look after, and then she finally found one, and then uh, she hears the whole story about these Finnish settlements and uh, Sami and tourists from Hutteruda, cruise ship, and other tourists that come in from all over the world. Here in Hirkenes, hear the story that this is a mega international city. Det finns det flera grunder till. Vi står först på gata om vad vi är. Ursäkta, kan jag skriva dig? Vi står om att det är Kirkenäs, Norges mest internationella småby. Vet du om flera flerkulturella färger i det långa land? Så vill vi gärna höra det. Okej, okay, thank you, Xenia. She is not a local Kirkenäs uh, either. Yes, and uh, a bit back to the border. Uh, since we have a border uh, in Shirkines, we have an organ uh, that is called a Norwegian Border Commissioner. And their task is to, it's an agency that ensures that the border agreement from 1949 uh, uh, and all of its regulations are complied. And as well, they are um, really often they're patrolling the whole border in order to see if this, if this border is in need of some maintenance or as well uh, as they are measuring the border and remeasuring the border and they keep an eye on the border uh, in other words um, yes and now we are uh, about to enter this uh, really um, really interesting concept of the geopolitical center of Shirkinas or Shirkinas as the geopolitical center uh, you know where is the border and there are of course uh, should be some military forces whether really visible or not that visible. Uh, and it's really funny story because here, um, I was just walking on the Sörvarange municipality in Shipkines and this is a torn bit of our local newspaper, which I just found under my feet, suddenly. And it was the first page of this paper which said um, Norwegian Intelligence Service, and that's it. This is where it was torn. And then I was I started thinking about this because there are many people that call Shirkinas for a spy city, and maybe they have a reason for that because, as I told you before, we have both visible and invisible military forces. And from the some of the visible military forces, first of all, I have to mention uh, the garrison uh, of Sörvaranger. Uh, all of our mil uh, we have a garrison of Sörvaranger which is located next to the airport, and that's, it's not really far away from the city or Shikin city. Uh, it's about 15 minutes drive. Uh, and this is where all of military recruits uh, have their military service as well as the many uh, officers that are working there on a permanent basis. And sometimes they are really visible and I would say hearable. Uh, because all these recruits, they have to have their military um, exercises. Uh, and I just have to uh, ask you first, do you know what the Yudel is? It's an application, Yudel. Yes, uh, it's kind of application where um, there are like you can leave some of the anonymous messages in your city or in your town or whatever, and you can read it and you can comment on it and stuff. And sometimes, just for fun, I'm just checking it out and seeing like what's happening in my town. And once, uh, when it was kind of really strange noises, like uh, whether explosions or shooting or something in the really far beyond, somewhere there, which is quite usual in Sövelange, I went to Yudel, and then this is what I saw. Uh, what the hell is smelling out there? Russia has lost it. And um, on, the one thing, on the one side, like it's really funny, uh, but it's really true that we really can hear everything from the very, very center of Shirkines. 
how all these military exercises are going on. We hear, we hear some explosions, we hear some shooting, we hear the helicopters are flying all over the place. It's not, it doesn't happen every day, but still we, we do feel that, okay, this is a military area and we are in the military area. And sometimes you can even hear some, uh, maybe the same kind of uh, exercises going on on the Russian side. And then, people, this is where people get really scared. Uh, but usually for people who are living in Sorvaragi municipality and um, uh, following with the news and stuff, usually in our local newspaper you can see some of the really big announcements, like one week or ten days prior to the exercise that, okay, uh, Garrison of Sorvaragi wants to inform you about the upcoming military exercises these days, these days and these days. Please. Keep calm, something like that. But uh, back to if uh, back to the history and um, uh, like the sides of the jokes. Um, there is a really like there is one real really good reason uh, why um, people uh, living in the borderland uh, in Sovereign municipality uh, they are not afraid of Russians. They are really friendly to them and this is why all this Barnes Corporation and really good neighborhood is going on. Is And one of the good reasons for that uh, I think is uh, the common history because as you I think all know that uh, during the Second World War in uh, 1944 uh, our East, uh, East Finnmark was liberated by the Russian the Red Army. And the funny fact is that uh, the whole the rest of Norway was liberated year after. So it's only Sirkinas and uh, Selvaranger and East Finnmark that was liberated uh, on 25th of October in 1944. And last year we celebrated an anniversary, 75th anniversary of the liberation. It was a really big celebration with both Russians and regions. And uh, here is a picture from our main square. There is a His Majesty uh, King of Norway uh, having his speech. On the background you can see our uh, Mayor of Sovranger and then um, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Norway uh, in Eriksson Sereda and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Sergei Lavrov, as well as Arno Sulberg, Prime Minister of Norway. Everybody was there. Uh, and one of the things uh, which um, is really hard to explain to somebody who is not coming from the borderland uh, is our concept of uh, local border traffic permit or as I call it uh, borderland citizen permit. Uh, we, because of this Barnes cooperation and uh, our good neighborhood, um, <coughs> as a result of it, we've got in, from 2012 the borderland has got this um, um, res like local border residents permit for all the people who are living in um, uh, gra um, borderland or border area and who has been living there for at least three years they have possibility to apply for a card or for this uh, permit borderland citizen permit uh, which gives you possibility to cross the border without any visa and go further to Russia of course uh, it's a limited Territory where you can where you can go, which you can enter and access. But still, this permit is a really good possibility for you to go to Russia without any visa, and you can have it up to three years. Uh, and our locals, both in Sorvarangi municipality, Shetkines, and all the other side of border in Russia, there are really many people who have this permit, and they really use it really, really often really actively. Uh, here's an example how they use it. Our Russian neighbors, people from Russia, they come into Shirkinets really often, uh, especially during before the Christmas time. There are buses from Russia every day, twice a day, three times a day, that are coming uh, to Shirkinets in order to buy something, to do shopping. And they also always, because you know, because of the sanctions, for instance, we don't have uh, Norwegian cheese, we don't have some um, German things or etc. etc. So people are going to Norway in order to do shopping and buy some uh, prohibited goods. Uh, and 
our Norwegian citizens uh, from Kirkenes and the border area, they go into uh, our border towns uh, on the Russian side, which are Nikel and Zapolarny. Uh, and they go in there in order to buy some stuff and um, to get really, really cheap gasoline and sometimes to eat at the fancy restaurant and you eat as much as you want and it is so cheap. So people really, really love doing that. And there are many people uh, or many friends of mine uh, who are Norwegians and living in or based or born and raised in Sirkinas, they really often go into a Nikel Ozapolarni and taking this uh, a holiday or one day off in <coughs> Russia and doing whatever they want. And then it's still, it's cheap and it's, they really love it. And there is an example because Zapolarny, it's also like um, up further than Zapolarny, there's also a military town. So there are mi military settlements there because on the Russian side we also, of course, have the garrison. Um, and there's a really funny picture because um, in Zapolarny you can see that it's also like military uh, presence, really strong military presence. Uh, and there's watermelons. Um, it's not, of course, it's not from Zapolarny, it's not from the north, but uh, if you want to get some goods, like if you are a Norwegian citizen from Shirkinas, you want to get some watermelons from Azerbaijan or from um, Crimea or south of Russia, you just have to cross the border to Nikel or Zapolarny. It's still about the polar circle, but the watermelons from Azerbaijan, they're worth it. Uh, and then we have this, um, of course, these Russian evenings or Norwegian, like Russian evenings in Norway or Norwegian evenings in Russia. Everything is intertwined and interconnected and people really love it. And every time I'm coming to uh, my friends, they always have something Russian on the table. And it's, it's a normal thing. It's a usual thing. And one more uh, really good example uh, of this Barnes Corporation and uh, both Barnes Corporation and um, uh, geopolitical um, um, thing uh, is this uh, balance pride uh, because um, in 2017 there was uh, for the very first time in history uh, it was arranged the balance pride for both Russian and Norwegian people so it was a joint pride and for the Russians it was really unique possibility to go in a pride parade without uh, ris risking something or without uh, like they were not they were not needed to be scared they and uh, this Barnes Pride uh, I instead of take like talking too much I just gonna show you the short video
Markus. Vi ska fortsätta till alla är er fri. Yes, so um Russia accepted this um, uh, law, uh, gay propaganda law, in 2013, and because of this law, because the Constitution of Russian Federation doesn't say anything that it's prohibited to be a gay person, but still, uh, with this propaganda law uh, from 2013, uh, people who are queer people, they're really scared and they're really confused about uh, how they can use or not use uh, social media, for instance. And when I was talking to some of the participants of this Barnes Pride, uh, they were really um, a bit scared uh, and they were telling me stories like, uh, you know, I have this social media actually, people can be free in this social media and internet, but still I'm really scared, I have no idea if I can or cannot uh, upload some pictures with my boyfriend, for instance, or girlfriend, uh, because I have no idea what this uh, law contains actually and how, how what kind of punishment I can get for that. So, and they really don't know what to do with that and that is why they keep it of course they keep in still low profile um, uh, uh, and one more things one more thing uh, um, i want to say uh, in the in the nature of all this um, um, shaking us as a geopolitical center um, it's also the thing that our mayor of uh, the <coughs> municipality place to uh, tends to say uh, that uh, capitals and their decisions, like both Oslo and Moscow, it doesn't really affect our uh, cooperation and our neighborhood in uh, in the north and in the in the border area, uh, because because of our common history, because of our neighborhood, and because that we know each other, we travel to each other constantly on a <coughs> like daily basis. We we see each other. Uh, there is why uh, no matter what happens, uh, no matter what kind of um, world's tensions they are uh, or they're going to be, we still we still know our neighbor. So it doesn't, it's, it's not affecting this good cooperation, both Barnes cooperation and Borderland cooperation, which we have today. And when I was spoken to some locals, um, for instance about this Crimea crisis or refugee crisis uh, in 2015 that occurred also in Shevkinets, in Sorbavangir municipality, on the Russian region border, uh, I was asking, okay, how did people behave then? Because back then I still wasn't in Cherkines. He was like, you know, no matter what happened, we are always, we, we never stopped crossing the border, we never stopped going to Russia, and we never kind of began uh, hating Russians or being afraid of them. And it was really shocking to me uh, to hear that. Uh, and it really, it really meant a lot to hear that from the local person, not from the some uh, people from the municipality or working for the government, for the state. Uh, so it was a real local knowledge and uh, the things that are really core to in this cooperation is neighborhood and dialogue. And from this dialogue, uh, dialogue and neighbor neighborhood and uh, cooperation, uh, it was some of the main reasons for my organization to get established. Uh, Picking up growing, as I said, the girls on the bridge is a collective of curators and producers, and exactly this uh, urge for having dialogue with uh, this Russian neighbor, it forced, not forced, but uh, it made these five local girls uh, to establish our organization. And just, I just have to switch my presentation. Yeah, so uh, after the Soviet collapsed, uh, there were five uh, local girls that were really, really eager to uh, get established this dialogue with Russian side uh, by the means of art and culture and contemporary art. Uh, it was established in 1996 uh, and uh, from 2001 we've been uh, realizing bigger or smaller scale um, uh, art and cultural projects. Uh, that, what did, that, what, that were dedicated uh, to the Barents region, to the high north, and to this border 
land and the border Russian Norwegian uh, and everything in transition uh, our and all of our activities all of our uh, projects we call them for uh, border crossing exercises because we're always crossing the border and uh, for instance one of our uh, main activity it's uh, artist in residency which is called bar uh, which is for Barnes uh, this is an artist residency for the artists th that are coming or based in Barnes region <coughs> both from Russia Norway other countries uh, and when they're coming to uh, our residency where they're getting to know this local area uh, local area of Portland and Sovereign municipality and of course we're taking them if it, like if it's Norwegian artists or Russian artists from that coming from Moscow or some other places sometimes because sometimes it's not only Barnes uh, artists that are coming to us uh, then we're taking a tour, we're showing them around and we are crossing the border together with them and then we're showing this whole route of the whole border area to them. And as a result of this residency, there are really often some uh, art projects uh, or artworks and even exhibitions uh, that uh, this uh, residency uh, is resulting in. And usually or really often uh, we take those artists that are coming to our residency uh, to our festival. And this is our main activity, uh, which is called Barnes Spectacle Festival. It's an annual festival uh, taking place in February. Uh, and there are many, many artists from our residency that are represented there. And um, our Barnes Spectacle, we, we call it for cultural political cocktail, because uh, we uh, were not only focused on the contemporary art, but we also, um, we with a theme, because Barnes Spectacle has uh, its theme which and every year uh, and as a theme we are choosing something that is really uh, like really hot issue for high north Barents region borderland and the world in general so uh, and all of the projects or artworks that are presented on this festival uh, they are always commenting on or reflecting on and discussing or playing with the main theme of the year uh, and also, um, recently in 2017, finally we opened our own big uh, project and exhibition space in Shitkinas. Uh, it's uh, in the pedestrian street and it's called Terminal B, B for Barnes. And Terminal because uh, Barnes, both Barnes uh, and the border area is always in transition. Uh, in there, uh, Terminal B, it's both exhibition space and our office where we also work in. Uh, and there we are showing the art of both local artists, artists from Barnes region and artists who are coming to our residency and then it results in the, some of the artworks. And um, uh, this year, because uh, now we are really, really, uh, time is running and we are having our Barnes Spectacle 2020 in February from 12th to 16th of February and this year's theme because Helle was talking about Barnes Spectacle in 2019 yesterday, about Chinatown, because this is what was burning and it was really hot issue. Uh, it still is, but uh, at this year, let's see. Yes. This is our webpage, Barnes Spectacle uh, 2020. <coughs> and this year's theme is the Russian connection. Uh, because of this, um, you know that there are many stories that, in, that are involving uh, some Russian uh, kind of invasion or some, there are always some big political um, issues that happening uh, all around Europe and the, the whole world. And people are always tending to ask themselves if, if it's Russians who, who are behind that. And uh, by using some really huge examples uh, and by the means of their art projects uh, and our artists who are working on the theme which is related to whether Russia or Russian connection in the whole world or in the Barnes region. Uh, we're gonna reflect on this theme, Russian connection, or we're gonna comment it, we're gonna play in it with it and we're gonna try to do reality checks sometimes and to figure, figure out uh, if it's like whether there is truth or where it's false. So uh, if you are 
gonna be in Shirkines, please remember about this festival from 12th to 16th of February. Thank you.